Hi guys, this video is going to talk to you about a blended math workshop and I'm going to apologize in advance for my cat that you will be able to hear in the background of part of the video. But first off, just a little bit about who I am. My name is Sally Osborne and I post at, or at teachingredefined.com and I'm a fourth grade math teacher in Texas. So in this video, I'm going to show you one of my digital math lessons that I've used in my classroom and I'm going to tell you how I used it in my classroom pre-COVID and then I'm going to give you some considerations, some things I've been brainstorming about for the socially distanced classroom and all the different ways that might look um, for this school year. So I'm going to start with the digital lesson overview. So this lesson is specifically about benchmark fractions. So they're using um, one half particularly in fourth grade in Texas are using one half to help them compare fractions. Um, so m all of my lessons that the kids do, they start with a video. So they would watch the video, they would have this Google slide um, assigned to them in Google Classroom. So they would watch the video, then they would have a arrow here that they would drag to rate their understanding and um, after they've done the video lesson. Let me back up. As they watch the video, they have a sheet that they're filling out in their journal where they're taking notes um, and reflecting on the video. So that's their first thing. And then the next activity would be using fraction tools. So we have like fraction towers or fraction strips and different manipulatives to help them compare fractions to one half. So they would put less than, greater than, or equal to in these boxes. Um, here they're really using the manipulatives, so they're getting that hands-on experience. After that, they're doing a fraction sort. So I've got um, fraction cards where uh, they're great because they have a fraction on them and then they also have a, a number line and um, a picture for the fraction. So they would draw 10 fraction cards and then they're sorting those fraction cards by whether or not they're exactly zero, less than half, exactly half, greater than half, or exactly one whole. Um, and they would just do this on their desk or on their table and they would take a picture and add it to the slide. And then the last activity would be using dice. Um, for this one, they would roll two dice to make a proper fraction and then they would figure out where that fraction would go um, based on these categories and they would type the fraction into the box and they repeat this until they've made a total of 20 fractions. Once they've made their 20 fractions, they color in the graph to show um, how many they had in each category. Uh, they like this because they can shade it in doing different colors using the tools in Google Slides. So um, some key things here, you can see it starts with the video. The next thing is it really follows the progression of hands-on, so they're using manipulatives, to pictorial, the fraction cards have pictures to go with them, to abstract, when they are rolling the dice, they're not getting, um, there's no pictures there to help them. So that would be what the kids are working on during math workshop. So a little bit about what my workshop model looked like before COVID. Um, there are three main components to it. So it was things that were most important were small groups, it's self-paced, and it's hands-on. The kids are, are always manipulating something. As far as the small groups would go, I typically would do four groups in my class, sometimes five groups, depending on how many kids I have, that are ability-based groups. Um, and these could change throughout the unit. And the lowest group always starts with me before they watch the video. Uh, so they would come to my small group table and we would do the first activity and the slides together while I'm teaching them the concept. So uh, for the one I just showed you, we would use the fraction tools together and we would look at whether or not the fractions on that slide were greater than, less than, or equal to one half. Um, and then they would go off on their own and watch the video lesson and then move on to the next thing. Um, the next lower group would also do the first activity with me, but they would have watched the video first. So that one wouldn't be as much direct teach as much as checking to see that they understood what they just watched. And then the two higher groups, 
are gonna get started on their own and then come check in with me and what I do with those groups really depends on where they're at with that particular skill and also just the the kids that I have that year sometimes I have kids that need a little bit more guidance in just work completion so they might be working on the activity at my table so I can help them focus um, or sometimes I've got kids that are flying through stuff and we're gonna do some more higher level extension or discussion so that really just varies um, another part of my math workshop is that it's self-paced so all of the students start with the video and then they just move on to the next activity at their own pace so this is something that makes it really different from your traditional centers um, I like that because they can move through that progression of concrete pictorial abstract so they're all doing the activities in my preferred order um, and they're all getting the lesson first I would always have a bucket of whatever tools they needed at each table so for the lesson that you just saw there would be fraction towers fraction manipulatives the cards that they need um, and there would be dice in there for them to use and like I said before um, my workshop style is very hands-on so while they're getting their instruction for all of their activities is digital to Google Slide, there's also a combination of manipulatives, tools, and paper activities. I also like to get kids up and moving, so sometimes there'll be task cards that are around the room that they're filling out. Um, one thing I've learned is that for manipulatives for older kids, the dice and cards are a great way to get, give them something to move. Um, fractions, it's easier to have manipulatives, but when you're talking about long division or place value some things like that you can always throw in some dice or a deck of cards okay so that's all great but what is it going to look like this year so I know that I'm definitely still in the brainstorming process my school is going to start virtual so the first month of school is going to be online so some things that I've thought about for math workshop in that setting um, I would be I'm planning to create a teacher video using a screencast to explain the different activities. Um, so what's nice is that I've got these Google Slides already created. Some of them will work, some of them will need tweaking, uh, but I can do a screencast to explain the activities that they can watch um, since they'll be working on their own at home. Also, there's digital versions of a lot of manipulatives. So you can find if you like our kids have iPads, so there's a lot of apps that they can use. Um, there's also some web based manipulatives if your kids are on like a Chromebook or something like that. I also was thinking of adding in a lot more self graded technology so that kids can get immediate feedback. So things like iExcel, um, Class Kick and Boom Cards. If you're not familiar with those, I would encourage you to check them out doing practice problems on Khan Academy or Google Form quizzes or a self-paced Kahoot or quizzes, anything where they're going to know right away if they're getting the answer right or not. I don't want them to do a whole bunch of practice on their own at home and not know that it's all wrong until I've had a chance to check it. So that's some of the considerations for virtual learning. Um, after that first month of school, we're going to be in person but having some social distancing uh, procedures in place. So the kids are gonna be spread out, not gonna be able to share materials, things like that. So this was hard for me to think of how to do workshop in this setting. So some things I've thought of would be to seat students by ability so that um, I could still kind of do some small group check-ins based on where they're sitting, even though they would be spread out. I know we're having to keep seating charts so we can be doing contact tracing so they're not going to be able to move around throughout the room. Um, so that was one thought I had. Uh, kind of like before using digital tools instead of real tools so they're not touching things. Another thought I had was um, to create a toolkit for each student that has like the most common tools. This would take a lot more materials and money and time. Um, so it's not necessarily feasible all the time but like for fractions I could even have paper fraction strips cut apart that they could have in like a little ziploc bag or a pencil box with some dice and some of the cards 
um, that would just be theirs to keep so it's not getting shared amongst the students. I was also thinking about switching what's digital and what's hands-on. So maybe the manipulative is on their device and they're writing on paper with their answers. So like on the lesson I showed you before, like with the dice, you know, they were rolling the dice and then they were recording it on their iPad. Well, instead they could have virtual dice and be recording in their notebooks. Um, another thought was to have half the class watch the video with headphones on while the other half does the first activity with me modeling it. And this would just help with attention, I think, with not having so many kids that are trying to um, listen to a lesson when they're all spread out. Um, and then another thought was that they could record everything in their journals and take pictures of it to turn it in so that they're not passing paper back into me. Um, just another way to cut down on what we're all touching. I also have heard of some schools that are doing like a hybrid learning. So they've got some days at school and some days at home. Um, to me, this would almost be the easiest or a little bit easier to plan for. They could do a video lesson at home and then in class you can focus on those class discussions and um, guided activities that you could do together. And depending on what your hybrid model looks like, you could play around with how you pace that. So for example, if your kids are two days on and three days off, you could front load with discussion and exploration. And then when they're at home, they're watching the video lesson and doing activities to practice what you started in class. Um, if you had every other day, like they come to school, then they're at home and then vice versa, they could watch the video lesson and do like a self-graded, like I excel or something at home. And then do the other activities and discussion in person when you're there to help them. I know I've heard of some where they're doing like one week on and one week off. If, if that was the case, I would suggest focusing on the more difficult skills during your in-person week and some of those building skills during the virtual weeks. Um, so just looking at what skills are going to be harder for the kids to learn on their own when they're not there with you. So those are just some thoughts that I've got. I would love to hear um, what your school is doing and how you're planning to try to keep a workshop model um, this year, as crazy as it is. So leave us a comment, tell us what you're thinking, and I can't wait to hear all your great ideas.